This is a very staggering statistic. The CPSC um, said in the last five years there's been 11 recalls, and that's for 7 million cribs. So Eight 7 million? million cribs have been recalled in the last five years. That's unheard of. There's only 4 million babies born in a year on average. So even if every single baby uh, bought a new crib, which they don't, you only, you only sell about 2 million cribs, one, one and a half to two, because they're passed down and, and used again. That's almost every crib that's been pr produced has been recalled. Thank God we haven't had one, but lots of people have. Here's another horrible statistic. The CPSC announced that 32 deaths um, have been involved in those five, in the last five years, and it's primarily due to drop side gates. Um, and what, what a drop side gate, my gates don't drop, we stopped making drop side gates a couple of years back, but it's just for the crib, it only lowers four inches, and people, this is a good selling point, people think that they're missing something, but truly it's just four inches. And you can make that difference up by moving the mattress support. Um, the mattress support raises, it, ours do in three different places. So um, you're not really losing anything, and anytime there's moving parts, there's a chance that they're going to they're going to wear out. Moving parts wear out quicker than non-moving parts. So um, we just decided a couple of years ago that those four inches just weren't wor worth the risk. We saw some gates were failing not on our lines but in other lines, and we went ahead and made the change. Last year or yesterday, um, we were at a meeting in New Jersey for the JPMA, and the JPMA is the Juvenile Products Manufacturing Association, and that's where, um, I don't know if you're a member, but anybody, a lot of people that manufacture for kids are a part of this organization, and they headed up, um, they headed up a conversation yesterday about the changes, and here's something that's really interesting. Until 2009, actually February 10th, there was no law that said you had to get your cribs tested. People thought that all cribs had been tested and were safe, but really there was no federal law. You didn't have to do it. Now the, the U.S. Consumer Safety Commission did put out guidelines and recommended, you know, this is how a crib should be designed. Your picket shouldn't be more than two and a quarter inches wide. Um, you shouldn't have any uh, gaps. You shouldn't have any. There's nothing a child can catch on. If you're going to do a poster, it has to be over a certain height so that there can't be a strangulation or any of that stuff. But they didn't regulate it. So there are and were cribs on the market that had never been tested. Um, in February 9th, 2009, they made it, uh, February 10th, they made it a ruling that you have to have all your cribs tested. But if you got a, a crib manufactured before then, there was no guarantee. Now, we've always tested our cribs, and, and I think that it's not a coincidence that we haven't had a recall. But, um, yeah, I, that is shocking. And when I tell that to people, they're really surprised. Everyone assumes that if it's on the market, it's safe. And that's, that's really, up until recently, not necessarily the case. Um, so, you know, your baby, when it's a newborn, sleeps approximately 20 hours in those first two months a day. And you think about the crib is where it's going to spend most of its time unattended. So you really need that crib to be safe. And what you can do as a consumer, uh, there are a few things. Number one, you're, if you, uh, I, I know this sounds self-serving, and it is, but I always recommend never ever using a used crib. Um, you just don't know the history of that piece. You don't know if the integrity's been compromised. If it's been assembled and disassembled, you don't know if it has the original hardware. If it doesn't, you can use the wrong size screw and split all this wood. You wouldn't even know it, but if your baby gets up and starts really going to town and kids are stronger than you think. They're left alone and they can get up to all kinds of craziness. It could split There's a, and then that would cause a trapping hazard. And that's how most of the babies were, were killed, is when the crib, when the gate detached from the main thing, it would cause a triangular opening. They get their heads in, they couldn't get their heads out, and that would be that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm always surprised when I talk, when people call me up and say, I've got a Brontecourt crib, it's from 1998, and I'd like new hardware. And I'll be like, well, we can absolutely send you new hardware, but that's a really old crib. Oh, but it's, you know, it was my sister's, and she took great care of it, and I know all of the history. But I don't care if she did everything perfectly. A crib that old, especially if it's wood. Now, the metal is not subject to the same, the same deterioration as wood, but wood is an organic product. And it will expand and retract um, uh, with, the, with the moisture in the air, and that breaks down the wood. These, although these are, these are recessed joints, but they're also glued. 
over time the glue can become brittle, it can break down. Um, it's just not a good idea and it's just not worth the money you're saving. I think it's always really important if, if money is an issue, don't don't save money on the crib. You know, you can buy you can buy used other things, but definitely not your crib because your baby's in here and you're not with that child and you just don't want to take any risks. Other areas that you need to be careful on are the mattresses. Um, there's a standard crib dimension that is regulated by the U.S. Consumer Safety Commission and the mattresses are, are, are made to fit that, but every there's a little bit of play in all mattresses and, and cribs. For example, if you look at the picket density on the iron versus the wood, they're not exactly the same, so the same mattress is going to fit exactly the same. So the rule of thumb is if you can put really, really easily, see I'm, I'm not, this isn't easy, I'm touching. If you can put your fingers between the mattress and the pickets and there's space, you're not touching, then it's too wide, you need a different mattress. And the best way to be sure is just call the manufacturer of the crib and say what, what mattress do you recommend for your designs. Um, all the information is on the U.S. Consumer Safety Commission at cpsc.gov's website. Um, just be very, very vigilant about the cribs you buy. Make sure that you know they're safe. Uh, the JPMA used to be a really great insurance because if it had the JPMA seal, then you knew it had been tested. Um, but many of the cribs recalled were JPMA certified. So, uh, you know, it, it is a layer of insurance, but it's not a, it's, it's not a guarantee. Your crib, even if you buy a perfectly brand new crib, you still should be checking it regularly, making sure that none of the nuts or the bolts have come loose, making sure that you know no cracks are appearing. Your crib could show up and look absolutely beautiful, but it could have taken a major hit in shipping that you're not aware of that compromised the integrity of the piece, and over time a crack will, will evolve. You just need to keep an eye, just check it, look at it. That's all you need to do. Move the mattress as your child grows. When it's a newborn, it should be in the highest position. You don't have to break your back getting it. And then as your child grows, you lower the mattress so they can't fall out when they're standing up. And then the last thing I really wanted to touch on are the, the paints. Because one of the new regulations involves testing of the paint. Um, again, until very recently, there were, no tests, there were no tests required for the paint at all. Not even under the uh, U.S. Consumer Safety Commission guidelines. So now they test mainly for two things, lead and phthalates. So, um, and the lead levels kept dropping. The lead levels that were acceptable three years ago are no longer acceptable. Now, so the, in theory, the crib that we produced three years ago, if it were to be tested by today's standards, would no longer be safe. So we've dropped the lead levels. Um, every crib company should be able to produce for you, and we're going to make it available on our website, um, all the test results for every production. And you'll look at the production line. You, need, you should have test results available. Um, it's a really, really important factor and the more you know, the safer it can be for you and your baby. And um, I just think, you know, get informed, buy from a reputable company, and don't be afraid to ask if the company's not willing to produce for you their safety certificates, I'd look elsewhere. Um, you know, that's really all I have to say. Does anybody have any questions on this subject? Or? Where are your cribs manufactured? My, my wood cribs are manufactured in Vietnam and my iron's done in China. Done in China. These are treated also without lead. Yeah. All the everything's also. without lead. Yeah. Well, there is lead, but it's a minute, minute. It's like point not and point four parts per million, which is a very, 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 very tiny amount. Uh, you can eat that. You can eat that paint, and you'll be fine. And it's good because kids do eat the paint. Oh yes. I get a lot of parents calling up saying, "My child just ate the crib, and there's paint all over her face. <laughs> yeah. What's going to happen?" I'm like, they're going to have paint over their face, but it's completely safe. Oh, Put a teething rail on. <laughs> Get them along, they're beavers, I don't know, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's the fun thing about the iron, they don't bite the iron, it's not bite friendly, they can't sink into it like they can wood, so yeah. we never have that on the iron. That's interesting. Yeah, never buy a secondhand crib, especially at a yard sale. When people tell me that, I start to panic. It's like, you have no idea what's happened to that crib. Megan used to work in a, in a daycare center, and she said that they would actually shake the cribs to put the babies to sleep. My head spun around. I'm like, you're, you're destroying the crib. Okay. And they, you know, and they were cheap cribs anyway, so even scarier. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mary.